Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at how to create a two column layout where one column remains within the box content area while the second column stretches to the edge of the screen. I've shown in a previous video how to do this, but this time we're going to go straight into the application and then we'll add in an extra twist, which is making the two columns to overlap each other. So if that's something that interests you, then let's get right into it. This is the design we're going to be working on today. It's a two column layout where the first column takes up 45% of the content area, while the second column takes up 55% of the content area, but then it stretches to the edge of the screen. The box content area now has this overlap, so it overlaps with the stretched content area. You can see the second example. This one takes up 40% of the content area, but then it stretches to the edge of the screen, and then we have the other one which takes up 60% of the content area, but then it has the overlap. If you're wondering, it is also mobile responsive. So let's right click on it, inspect, and let's maybe choose the first one first. And then as we go down, everything is mobile responsive. Basically, this was asked by a community member. It says that it wants the image to be at the top for mobile and then the content at the bottom, which is the usual case. Then the same thing for the other one, image at the top, content at the bottom. But then when it expands to the tablet and the desktop view, then it goes back to this layout. You can keep going up and this one keeps stretching. The image keeps stretching to the edge of the screen while the text just remains within the box content area. So if this is something that interests you, then let's get right into it. So here we have a blank Elementor page. The first thing you need to do is head over to my website. The link will be in the description below. And then you see this tutorial, which is the advanced two column layout. That was for a previous tutorial I made. We're going to be using the same concept. That tutorial was teaching you the calculations behind this layout. But this one, we're just going to be applying the calculations. So we'll go step by step with the method. And then at the end, we'll now make sure that they overlap each other and they have that layout and is mobile responsive. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to do is head over to where it starts with the method. We need to have the latest version of Elementor and Elementor Pro installed. The reason is that we're going to be using some of the latest features, which are the custom units. We're going to be using the custom CSS, data attributes, as well as the Flexbox container. So that's why we need Elementor and we need Elementor Pro for this tutorial. So if you have those, then we'll go over to the next step, which is to activate the Flexbox feature. If you have 3.17 and above, it usually is supposed to be installed by default. But if it isn't, then go over to Elementor, Settings, and then Features, and then activate Flexbox Container. It should be at the bottom somewhere. Then once you've done that, we can now go back to your edit page and start from there. If you want to follow along, you can follow along with me as we go along with this. So the first thing we need to do is create a 50-50 two-column Flexbox layout. So that should be this one, the 50-50 layout. Then we also want to add some properties for the parent container. So let's start with creating our 50-50 two-column layout. Flexbox 50-50 layout. So we have the layout intact. Let me add in the inspector by pressing Ctrl I to pull up the inspector. So it's divided into this. So the next thing is we create this kind of layout. So let's see, it should be a parent container, box container, and stretch container. But for the example, let's look at the example. We have, we're going to be using the second one. We have the stretch container should be on the left while the box container on the right. So let's do that. Go back, just going to rename them. This is parent container. The left one is the stretched container. And the right one is the boxed container. So now for the parent container, we're going to be adding some properties. So let's go back. So the first property we want to add is the content width. 
We need to change it from the boxed content width to the full width. Because we want it to expand to the edge of the screen, basically. So let's go over to this one. So that's the parent container, content width, change it to full width. Then we'll go to the next step, which says we should add a class name of DD Mixed Layout. So copy that, go back to your parent container still, advanced tab, then go down to the CSS classes, then just drop in DD Mixed Layout. Then the next step is to add data attributes. So for this one, depending on which one has the higher percentage of the content width, we give it a data attribute of either data call higher, should be either stretched or boxed. If you go to the example, the boxed area takes up 60% of the content area. So that means it has a higher percentage than the stretched content. So we'll now say the second one, which is data call higher boxed. Copy that, go back to our page. So this time we'll go to the attributes. That's where we add data attributes. And then we just paste that in. So now we can publish it, then continue. So we see it says gap between columns as well. That's the next one. So let's add this variable, DD boxed gap. The reason why we're putting a value that is a custom variable in our gap element because we're going to be using the gap in our calculations. So rather than having to set it in multiple places, we just want to use a custom variable and then we reference that variable in the places we want so that once we change the variable from one place, it reflects everywhere, basically. So now let's go back. So the layout, the gap between elements, which is just called gaps, change it from pixel to the pencil icon. And then for the columns, just paste that value. We could also set it for the rows as well to make everything consistent. So now we can publish it. Then we continue So the next step. Next step now is to add our justify content. So depending on where the stretch content is, this one is focused on the stretch content. The previous one was focused on where the box container is, which one is bigger. But this time we're looking at the stretch content if it's going to be on the left or on the right. If it's on the left, then we set it to justify content start. If it's on the right, we set it to justify content end. Because you can see where this taller line is, that's where we want it to be. So for this example, if you look at it, the stretch content is on the left. So go back to our design and then we just say, everything's still on the parent container, justify content to be on the start. Now, we're not really easily seeing all these things. So to see everything working out properly, let's now go ahead and add in our widgets. So add in an image widget. Then I'll also add in some text and maybe a text editor widget. So we have these two widgets. First thing, let's add in a proper image. Don't forget to add in your alt text, which describes the image because for screen reader users, they cannot see the image, so they need something to explain what the image is all about. But for this example, I'm just going to skip it. So that's it. We have our content in there now. Let's publish it. Now we can continue with the layout. So let's go back to the text. So this time we've added all of these features. So the only value I've not put is the padding. So we need to set the padding to zero. The reason why I'm putting the padding to zero is you can notice that the image has this piece around it because of that padding. We want the image to stretch to the edge of the screen. So we have to take away the padding from the image. So let's first on the parent container, advanced tab, padding, we set it to zero. It still has some space because that's for the child container as well. So the stretched container, go to the advanced tab again, set the padding to zero. Now the image stretches to the edge of the screen and that works out well. 
The next thing we need to do is that the image itself, we need to give it the width of 100% because it will not be actually 100% at the moment. It's taking up just as much space as it can. But because it's very big, that's why it looks like it's taking up 100% of its container. But we have to specifically state under the style type of the image, the width should be 100%. Then the height, you can just set it to 100% as well. Or you can give it some value if you want. Object fit, we set it to cover. Then center, center, that's it. So let's publish. Now we can continue. Let me also give the text a background color so we can see what's going on. Because right now it's white, so we don't really know where it starts and where it ends. So let's go to style tab. This is the box container. So the background type, go to the color. I'm just going to choose this light blue. So we have that. Now let's publish it. And then we can continue. So we finished with the parent container. The next step is now the child container properties. So we'll start with the box width child container. All we have to do is give it a width with the pencil icon of DD call boxed. So just copy this var DD call boxed because it's a variable. Then go to the box container, layout tab, and then change the width from 50% to the pencil icon, and then just give it that value. Go similarly for the second one, it is DD call stretch. So copy that value. Then go to the stretch container, layout tab, the width, change it from percentage to the pencil icon, and give it DD call stretch. So we have those two, so publish. Then now we'll add in the last bit, which is the custom CSS. Now the custom CSS is divided into two portions. There's one called the site-wide CSS. This one, you add it to where you have your general custom CSS, because people like to put their CSS in an unorganized way. So you can put it in your child theme, you can put it in your code snippets plugin, or you can use the Elementor site settings and then custom CSS and adding your CSS there. But if you want, you can just still add it directly to your container. It doesn't really matter. So we'll copy this. And then I just paste it in my container for this example. But usually I'll, you should add it to your general place where you put your CSS. Because I'm not going to be touching the values here. It's going to be a fixed value. So just put it in there. Then we'll go back. And then we'll copy the other one, which says this section specific CSS. For this one is now within each of the parent containers. This is what we're going to be using to readjust the values as we want. So if you have like five containers on your page, you copy the CSS to those five containers and then you just adjust where necessary. So like if you want to change the percentage of the box width, want to change the gap, you, if you want to even change the content width area, you change it from this one. You don't need to change anything in the top CSS. So let's copy this. But for this example, everything is just going to be in the same place. So we have this too. Now we can publish it. And then we can preview it on the front end. See, it is working out well. There's a gap, which is the default gap I set. And then it is working out well. But you notice one thing. At the moment, it is going past the content area. It's supposed to stop at where the all right reserved stops. The reason being that, remember I said the data attribute, depending on which one is higher, we should say data call higher should be that value. But right now, the stretch container is the one that has the higher value, but we set it to be boxed. That's why it's having this issue. If you go back to your custom CSS, the attributes, and just change it to stretch, and then save it, and look at it on the front end, you notice that now it is lined up properly. So that's why you have to make sure that you put the right value in the data attribute. 
And unfortunately, if you have Elementor free, you don't have access to the data attributes, so it will not work out well for you. So you need Elementor Pro for this. So let's go back. We want it to be the box to one because this 60%, we're going to change it. So now let's go back to our custom CSS. And now let's change the values. All oh, by changing the values within this selector. So this one has to be on the parent container for where we want to affect. Now we want the parent container to be 60 for the boxed area. The gap, we want it to be zero. But what, what happens if we don't put a unit? It breaks because the custom CSS, the way it works in the calc, you cannot add a value which has a unit without a value without have a unit. And unfortunately, we're using a unit for the gap in the calculation. So if it doesn't have a unit, then it will not work. Because like even in mathematics, you can't say 2x plus 2, it will not give you 4x. It will just give you 2x plus 2. It will not be able to combine together. But if you say 2x plus 3x, then the two other can combine together to give you 5x. So that's the same thing here. The gap must have a unit. So you can use any unit of your choice. You can say percentage. You can say characters. You can say x. You can say pixel. As long as it has a unit in there, then it will work. So now I have zero pixels. That's why the warning is there that you must put a, a unit. In a future video, I'll show you some of the rules of custom CSS and calc functions and why some people's custom CSS don't work and then you think it is elemental that is broken, but no, it's just how custom CSS works. So let's publish this. Now that we have that, let's now preview it on the front end. Refresh again, you see it lines up properly. So, and that's the first part is done. So if this is all you want to do, then this is already good enough. But if you want to now go further and then do the overlap, and as you can see from the example, it also is going to the bottom. It's not stretching to the full height. It's just at the bottom. To get those two done, then stick around and then I'll show you in the next couple of minutes. All you have to do is go back to your container. And then this time we're going to be using one feature called align items to be able to bring the container to the bottom because right now is by default the align items is set to stretch so that's why both containers are stretching to the edge but if you want them to be aligned to the bottom then you just have to go to the parent container layout and then align items just set it to end you see immediately it pushes it down basically it's now saying just take up as much height as you can don't need to fill the entire container of your parent if you don't want to do it directly on the parent container, you can as well still go to your child container and then under the advanced tab, say align self to be end. Both of them will give you the same result. But let's just do everything from the parent container. So let's take this off. Go to the parent container. Then the align items, we just set it to end. Then let's give it some padding so that it has a bit of breathing room. So for this, box child container i just set the padding of maybe 20 pixels so we've gotten our first step done which is to push this down now we can just close this up for the second challenge we want it to overlap so how can we do that basically all you have to do is use the negative margin trick because what does negative margin do it's like you create a vacuum and you open up a small hole in that vacuum it has to fill that vacuum with something so like with air so it pulls air into it so that's the same thing with this way when you put a negative margin on a container that means you're saying you're having negative space and there cannot be a negative space so it will try to fill that space up with something so it's filled the space up with the nearest sibling element and then if you look at it so let's do the test let's unlink it I want to basically on the left, we are now creating a, a vacuum on the left. The moment you create the vacuum, it will keep pushing itself inward because it's trying to fill up that vacuum. So let's go, let's say 40 pixels as the gap. 
So now that we have this margin of 40 pixels now, but you will notice that it is, because it's taking up this space, it's leaving some space on the right. So now we have to now do a second thing, which is to fill that space back up. How can we do it? We can now use the width value. So we just add the same value that we've taken away in margin, add it in width. So go to your layout tab. This is all on this child box container. We are adding the same 40 pixels, but we can't just use plus 40 pixels here. We have to use a function. So we have to wrap it in a function called the calc function. That's the calculation function. Then we can now add, do so subtraction, your addition, your division, and whatever you want to do. So just wrap it in the CLC, that's calc, put a bracket, then at the end, we now add the 40 pixels. And then we close it. So we've added that space back in. If you publish it and view it on the front end, you notice, if you see, it's still lined up properly and then it is filling that space. So basically, the negative space and then it's adding a positive at the other side. So that's basically it, everything done. But to make it more maintainable, we can now abstract those values because you notice that when we go here, we have to change the value here, then go to advanced tab and change the value there again. So that's like doing multiple steps. But the goal of CSS is to be able to make sure that everything is maintainable, that you can change it from one position and then everything is spread across and changes. Same way with like our global colors, our global typography. That's the goal of CSS, to be able to manage everything from one location. So rather than using this minus 40 pixels, we can say that value of 40, we can give it a custom variable. So we'll go to our parent container or anywhere we like. Since that way we added the other CSS so that everything is managed from one place. So we'll come back to this CSS, go to the custom CSS and we'll create a new CSS variable. This time we'll just call it maybe DD overlap. And we'll still give it back that 40 pixel value. Then now we now reference this var dd overlap in the width value as well as in the negative margin value. So we'll go to our container. So rather than using this 40, we want it to be minus 40, but with that variable. So first use the pencil icon. Then because it's minus 40, not 40, so we have to do minus one multiplied by 40. We have to now add in a calc again and say minus one multiplied by var dd overlap. Once you close it back, there's, it has now gotten that variable, it works again. Go to the layout as well. Replace these 40 pixels with var dd overlap. Close it. Yep, that's it. So now if you go to your parent container, you can change everything from there. So custom CSS, if you want it to be 60, if you want it to be in maybe uh, characters, if you want it to be, that's too big, maybe like RAM, any kind of method you want to use, it will work out well. So let's publish it. Maybe I'll just make it something small, like maybe like a 2RAM or 4RAM. Publish it. Yeah, and that's it. If you look at it on the front end, everything works out well. You can inspect and go down. See, it keeps. The only problem is when it gets to the mobile, it has that problem because we put a negative margin. So when it gets to mobile, it is pushing to the left, but we don't need any negative margin on the mobile view because everything is going downward. So all we have to now do is go back to our CSS and then check tablet looks okay. Mobile is going away. So let me just use the inspector. We choose our box container. And this time under the advanced tab, we don't want any negative margin. So basically just turn that to zero. Then, but we do want some bit of space here. So you have to go to your layout tab. By default, Elementor gives it a width of 100% on mobile. So if you want it to have a bit of 
space by the edge, you can say maybe 90%. Or if you just want it to be the same value as the overlap, then you can throw in a calc again. So calc 100% minus the overlap that we created in the first place. And then that's it. If it's too big, maybe you can decide to like divide it by the two to make it smaller. Then we now want it to overlap upward. So the same thing we do is like since we want it to have an upward push, we use a top negative margin. So advanced the margin on link it. I'm just say the same thing calc because it's supposed to be a negative, so negative one multiplied by var dd overlap and then it overlaps top so it's that same value as what we had on the left now it is going to the top and yeah that's it we have completed the design and now it is completely mobile responsive so if you go mobile it looks okay tablet and desktop once it gets past that 140 pixels then it keeps extending but the image keeps sticking to the edge yeah if this video has helped you please do leave a like share the video make some comments if you have a better method please do leave it in the comment section below i would love to hear your comments and in the next video i'll show you how to do the same layout using css grid and it is way faster and more powerful so let's see how it's done in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.